Hey, I'm Adam, and today we're going to be TIG welding some aluminum. One valuable skill that you can learn when doing anything TIG welding is learning how to feed the rod. That's the first step of this process. So you can practice this anytime. All you have to do is get a TIG rod, your TIG glove on, put it right there in between your pointer finger and your middle finger and feed the rod out. There's no one set way to feed rod. I can do it sometimes like this. Other times if I'm doing a vertical weld, I'll do it like this. It all depends on what you're comfortable with. We will be doing a 1G butt joint and also a outside corner joint. So a joint, butt joint just like that, and then an outside corner joint. Two very, very common welds in industry. So here we have our eight inch by eighth inch aluminum. We have acetone to clean our aluminum. Same with a wire brush, stainless steel wire brush may I add. Our TIG gloves. For the outside corner joint, I'm gonna be using 332, 5356 aluminum filler. And for the butt joint, I'm gonna be using eighth inch 5356. The first step whenever you're welding anything aluminum is to clean the material. The material literally cannot be clean enough. With all of our safety gear on, we are going to start cleaning the aluminum. Uh, I'm gonna take uh, some acetone, and I'm gonna wipe down the surface first before I do any wire brushing, and then I'll come back after I'm done wire brushing and hit it with acetone again. Once I've cleaned off the surface from any just sort of contaminants that are just laying there, I'm gonna take a wire brush and move in one direction, not embedding any of the contaminants back into the aluminum. You're gonna to want to do this to both the front and the back side. After I'm done my wire brushing, I'm gonna come back and wipe away any sort of residue that's left over by the wire brush. We're gonna start off with the butt joint. We're gonna to try to get full penetration all the way to the back side, creating a very nice strong weld because aluminum is not terribly strong and you don't want that weld just sitting like a marshmallow on top of that. It's not like super precise and super bang on like stainless is. It, it, it has way more give. So, yeah, like you have, you have, you actually, this is a lot, uh, people struggle with this because it's, they almost try too hard, if that makes sense. Yeah. So, they just kind of, yeah. and like this, as soon as you duff, if you hit this and hit the tungsten, like everything pretty much blows up. So, you don't really wanna. So here I'm going to light up just before the edge of this piece, I'm gonna dab some filler rod in, and I'm gonna come back to the edge, and then start my weld to avoid any cracking. That could be. You will also notice that I'll be using a 332 sharpened 2% laminated tungsten. We'll be running AC polarity, high frequency TIG, because we're using the foot pedal. And then also our pre-flow will be 0.5 seconds, post-flow 3 seconds, amps are at 110, our AC balance is at 70%, so 30% cleaning, AC frequency is at 120 hertz. Since we're using high frequency and a pedal, I'm going to have max amps, so the foot pedal all the way down at the beginning of the weld. And by the end, the last inch, I'm gonna be way, way off the pedal, just like how you would slow down in a car.
One thing that makes uh, getting full penetration on aluminum very tricky is that oxide layer. That oxide layer actually melts at a higher temperature than what the aluminum itself does. So that being said, if you can look, it will, does not look like the weld on the back side. It ha almost looks like it has some sort of a film over top of it, and that is the oxide layer. And I'd like to reiterate how much cleaning aluminum affects your weld. Just like the butt joint, I'm going to dab about once every second and I'm going to start a little bit above the edge, dab in some filler and then come back to the edge ensuring that I don't get any crater cracks or underfill. I'm Adam Sebastian, and thanks for watching.